Okay, net ionic equations. So far we've learned how to write balanced chemical equations for these double displacement reactions. We've also done single displacement, synthesis, and decomposition. Now what we're looking at is a form of an equation called a net ionic equation that describes the chemical change that occurs in a reaction. This can be used for any type of reaction. So we're going to look at it in the context of different types, but I'll begin with something familiar, the reaction one of the reactions that occurred in the precipitate patterns lab. So I've rewritten the balanced equation that we came up with in class to describe the formation of the silver chloride precipitate. You'll see that written here. The next line is, uh, I've left space now, for the total ionic equation. So to write the total ionic equation, it's extremely helpful if you, as a bit of rough work, jot down the ions that formed each of the reactants and products. And so I'm going to go across the top here and note the silver ion, the nitrate ion, the sodium ion, the chloride ion. And over on this side, I see the silver chloride solid, the sodium ion, and the nitrate ion. I'm particularly paying attention to the compounds that have aqueous here because the solid of silver chloride, those ions actually stay together. I won't be looking at separating them in the total ionic equation, and that's why I didn't focus to write those there. This is just rough work, so if you wanted to put them there, that's okay. Now, in the total ionic equation, here's where we take any compound that is aqueous and show those ions dissociated, so broken up, separated, in water. So we're going to do that for silver nitrate, for the sodium chloride, and for the sodium nitrate. So we start with the symbol, so the symbol of Ag, the charge, positive, or positive one, and then Aq, because that ion is surrounded by water molecules, hydrated in solution. Plus, the nitrate ion, symbol, charge, Aq. Plus, the sodium ion, symbol, charge aq plus the chloride ion symbol charge aq then i draw an arrow because that's where i am in the equation and now the next substance is a solid so anytime you see a solid liquid or gas you copy down that formula exactly as you see it in the original equation and then we have sodium nitrate aqueous so i'm going to break up the aqueous compound into its ions symbol charge aq symbol charge aq now it's important to balance this equation also and because i didn't have any coefficients other than one in the first equation as i don't have any coefficients to consider there and as i scan through i see there's one silver so that's really one silver ion there's one nitrate ion package here one sodium one chloride one silver chloride there, one sodium, and again, one nitrate package. Now, all of those ones that I just wrote actually, in fact, don't need to be written, but I wanted to show you how I was counting to see the ions that were present. If there had been a balancing coefficient in front of a formula, then I would have been multiplying to determine the number. So we'll see an example like that in a moment. That's the end of the total ionic equation. Now look for the spectator ions. The spectator ions will appear identical on the left side and the right side. So we scan and notice that the sodium ion right here, one sodium ion AQ, one sodium ion AQ. And I see the nitrate, one nitrate ion AQ, one nitrate ion AQ. So sodium and nitrate ions are the spectator ions in this reaction. In order to write the net ionic equation, we need to cancel the spectator ions. So I'm going to cross those out now in preparation to write the net ionic equation. And all we do now for the net ionic equation is copy down what's left over after we cancel the spectator ions. So I see the silver ion and a chloride ion forming silver chloride solid. And so ultimately, the net ionic equation is the reaction that describes the chemical change. In this case, 
the formation of a precipitate. So to summarize, in order to write the total ionic equation, so this, this one up here, we wrote the symbol and then the charge, AQ, and then we balanced. And we did this for aqueous substances only. And then to get the net ionic equation, we cancel the spectator ions. And then copy down what's left over. Always check that your coefficients in the final equation are in lowest terms. Here they're all just ones, so there's nothing really to check there. But sometimes after you cancel spectator ions, you'll find that the coefficients left in the net ionic equation can actually be reduced. Okay, so let's keep, let's keep these tips in mind here, that to write the total ionic equation, we'll be looking for aqueous substances and breaking them up to write symbol charge AQ and we'll balance afterwards. And then we cancel the spectator ions in order to form the net ionic equation. Okay, so a few more examples here. I'm asking you to write the total ionic and net ionic equations. You'll see that I have not predicted the products, so you'll need to go ahead and do that. Balance the equation, put the states in before you can begin the total ionic equation. So I'm gonna pause the video and ask you to complete the balanced chemical equation, including states, and then try the total ionic and net ionic equation, and I'll come, turn the video back on and you'll hear me explain it. Okay, so for example one, I filled in the, I wrote in red, rough work, the ions, so the symbols and the charges of the ions found in the reactants, and then I switched partners to determine the products. Cross charges down and found the formulas CuOH2 in brackets there and KCl. Then I checked the solubility guidelines and found that the copper 2 hydroxide was a precipitate and that potassium chloride was aqueous, and then I balanced the equation. So now I'm ready to move on to the total ionic equation. So I want to emphasize that I am focused in on the aqueous substances here. Those are the ones that I'm going to break up into their ions. And so I look at copper 2 chloride, and I, the rough work I did really helps me here because I can see the ions right there, the copper 2 ions, symbol, charge, AQ. I'll leave a blank here for any balancing coefficient. Then the chloride ion, Cl negative one, symbol charge AQ. Then the potassium ion, symbol charge AQ. Then the hydroxide ion, symbol charge AQ. If you're getting the hang of this, pause the video and complete this equation and then check back. So I continue, I'm not dissociating the solid compound, but when I get to the aqueous potassium chloride, symbol charge AQ, symbol charge AQ. And now for the balancing. So I look back in the original question. There's one copper there, so one copper ion. Two chloride ions, there we go. Now there's one potassium here, but multiplying by the two out front means there are two potassium. Same with the hydroxide. There's one, but multiplying by the two out front, there are two hydroxide. I leave the solid as it is. I copy the coefficient. If it's there, it's really just a one, so I'll leave that blank. I guess I didn't write the blank, but that's okay. And then I see one potassium here, multiplied by the two, that's two K positive, and one chloride, multiplied by the two, two chloride. There's the completed total ionic equation. Now, net ionic equation. Cancel the spectator ions and copy down what's left over. So I notice the two potassium are spectator and the two chloride ions. So I copy down what's left over for the net ionic equation. Cu2 positive plus the two hydroxide ions will form the copper 2 hydroxide precipitate. All right, so those have been two double displacement questions. Now, this next question is a different reaction pattern. The same rules still apply. Predict your products following the, the, what you learned for the, that particular lesson, and then 
balance the equation, put your states in, uh, and proceed to write the total ionic equation. Dissociating only the, the aqueous compounds. If there's a solid, liquid, or gas, leave them identical. Cancel your spectator ions once you're finished there and write the net ionic equation. So give this a shot and then check back in with the video. And just to help you out, since you're going to have copper involved in a compound in the products, I'll give you the hint that it's the copper 2 ion. Okay, so I predicted products. Copper is above silver and so it will displace to form silver solid and copper 2 nitrate. Balance the equation and write the states. Now for the total ionic equation. I'm only dissociating the aqueous compounds. So I'm thinking here about the silver ion and the nitrate ion that were used to make up that compound and here the copper 2 ion and the nitrate ion. And so those are the ions that you see dissociated in the total ionic equation. Okay, last step, cancel the spectator ions and write the net ionic equation. Pause the video to do that if you haven't done it already. Okay, cancel the spectator ions and it turns out there's only the nitrate ion as the spectator ion. Notice that the copper is a solid, a neutral solid on the left side and an ion, an aqueous ion on the right side. Silver is an aqueous ion on the left side and a neutral atom solid on the right side. So those are not identical. It needs to be symbol, charge, AQ on both sides correctly balanced. Okay, example three and four, and can we squeeze five in? Well, you can see it. I'll have to scroll up to show you the solution. So go ahead and try these and check your work when you're done. Okay, so potassium nitrate and sodium hydroxide undergo double displacement to form potassium hydroxide and sodium nitrate. Turns out both those products are aqueous. Neither of them decompose to form a gas, and so there's no reaction. When there's no reaction, that means, look, everything here is aqueous. All those ions would end up cancelling. So they're all spectator ions, which means there is no chemical change here. There's no net ionic equation to describe a reaction that doesn't occur. For number four, sodium carbonate plus the hydrofluoric acid. We undergo the double displacement. One of the products is carbonic acid. Before you say there's no reaction here, remember that carbonic acid decomposes to CO2 gas and water. Check back in your double displacement lesson and further back to the decomposition to verify this. After balancing the equation, there's two in front of the HF and the NAF. So I go ahead and write the symbol, charge, and AQ for every aqueous substance. So that includes the sodium carbonate, the hydrofluoric acid, the sodium fluoride. So symbol, charge, AQ, symbol, charge, AQ, symbol, charge, AQ, symbol, charge, AQ, and so on. The gas stays the same, the liquid stays the same. Then I go through the balancing. There are two sodium, one carbonate, 2 times 1, 2 H's, 2 F's, and so on. Cancelling spectator ions, I see the sodium ions. Two sodium ions are identical on the left and right, as well as the two fluoride ions. And so we copy down left, le what's left over and see how the carbon dioxide gas is formed. In fact, the carbonate ion and the hydrogen ion from the acid are responsible for forming the carbon dioxide gas and water. Okay, last example here. Okay, perchloric acid and potassium hydroxide react in a double displacement reaction to form potassium chlorate and water. When I write the total ionic equation, you'll notice that I dissociate the aqueous compounds only, which does not include the water. The water is copied down exactly as it showed in the first re equation. Potassium and chlorate, perchlorate, sorry, are the spectator ions, and so those have been cancelled to leave us with the hydrogen ion and hydroxide forming water. And that gets at the heart of a neutralization reaction. The H positive from the acid and the hydroxide ion from the base combine one to one to form liquid water. Okay, that's it for net ionic equations.